Hello and welcome back to Let's Talk Chicago Bears. As you can see, I'm still not um, at my my set, my usual set at home. Uh, this will be the last show I do at my sister's place here in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, so second to last game and um, let's get to it, right? It's New Year's Eve, so um, let's rock and roll. Okay, the Bears are, um, well first, a couple things I wanna say. Um, first, my heart goes out to John Madden and his family. He passed away on the 28th this week at the age of 85. I mean, he lived a good life and he was just a great announcer. I loved watching games with him and Pat Summerall. So he had a good life. So rest in peace, my friend. And then the really sad news of Jeff Dickerson, the beat reporter for the last 20 years for the Chicago Bears, died this week. Um, at the age of 44. Oh, how horrible. And his wife two years ago passed away and they left an 11 year old boy. So back in Illinois, I hope you give their, his 11 year old boy and his parents a lot of uh, love and support because they deserve it. So rest in peace, my friends. Okay, so let's get to it. On a brighter note, well, not really. Um, the Bears are five and 10 and they're playing the 4-11 and New York Giants. So um, these two teams have played uh, do, 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 61 times. The Bears lead it 35-24 to 24 with two ties. So that's a good thing. Now the Giants this year should really be loving, uh, giving the Bears a lot of love because if you remember in last yesterday, last year's draft or I should say the 2021 draft in April, the Bears gave the Giants their number one draft pick to move up to get Justin Fields. So the Giants should be giving a big thank you to the Chicago Bears because the record's so bad. So it looks like the Giants, if all goes well, the Giants are going to have two number one draft picks in the top 10. So, um, yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> yeah. But, um, we're hoping next year and for many years to come, Fields shows us it was well worth giving that away. Let's hope, right? Because once Nagy's gone, then we know we're on our way. So, okay, let's talk about the Giants a little bit. Um, they're not very good either. Although, you know, they beat us in a lot of categories except for rushing. But their passing yards, they averaged about two, uh, 207 yards a game passing, and that leaves them 21st out of 20, 32 teams in the league. They beat us in that category. Uh, rushing, they're not so good. They average about 95 yards a game, and that gives them 27th in the league. And I believe this is the only category we beat them in. Um, a point scored, um, they're right there with the Bears. They score an average of 16 points. That ties them for 30th in the league. And I, I'm almost sure the Bears, when I get to their stats, the Bears, so the Bears beat them in two categories, rushing and points scored, but not by a lot. And points allowed, they give up an average of 24 points a game, and that puts them 21st in the league out of 32. Now, um, from what I've been reading on Sunday's game, the coach said the uh, Giants are going to play both their second and third string quarterback. Their first string quarterback is on IR. So they're going to be starting Mike Glennon. Yeah, you heard me, Mike Glennon. Remember him when he played for the Bears? We wasted about $5 million on that guy. Another jo great job, Pace. Yeah. Um, Glennon has played five games for the Giants. He has four touchdowns and eight interceptions. So... It would be nice to get see him get a nice round 10 interceptions. Let's get two out of them this week, huh? How's that sound? And then Forum is their rookie, and um, he has played two games, no touchdowns and one interception. As a matter of fact, last week he got pulled out of the game because it was so bad. Their leading rusher, um, inter interestingly enough, is not Barkley. Um, because uh, 15 months ago, 
in Soldier Field against the Chicago Bears, Barkley, who was really, really supposed to be good, and he was good at Penn State, and it came out good in the NFL, but 15 months ago he tore his ACL, so it's taken him some time to come back, so right now he only has 461 yards rushing. Their leading rusher is a gentleman named Booker, and he has 533 yards rushing, so I think the Bears are going to, um, although Hicks, I don't believe, Hicks is, uh, as of today, Hicks is still on the COVID list. He doesn't play. We all know we're going to have a problem stopping the rush because without him, it's very hard for the Bears to stop the rush, unless Eddie Goldman steps up and the other guys. But um, I'm not overly concerned about the passing or rushing game, but we'll see, right? Anything can happen. Um, the defense for the Giants uh, have 29 sacks. 13 interceptions, which is really darn good because we don't have anything near that. We beat them in sacks, clearly. Um, so they have 13 interceptions and seven fumble recoveries, and that's right around the Bears. So uh, the defenses for both teams, except for sacks and interceptions, are very comparable. But the Bears, by far, beat them in sacks because the Bears have 42, which we're going to talk about. All right, so let's talk about our pathetic team, the Bears. Um, the Bears' passing game is dead last. It is 32 out of 32 teams. They're, they only pass for 185 yards, and um, part of it has to do with lack of experience in the quarterbacks and a beat-up um, uh, bad offensive line. So we all know that, right? There's nothing new there. So, and they're rushing. The only good thing about it is we do average about 122 yards a game. It should really be higher, but um, in most of the games this year, in the second half, they had to start throwing the ball because they're losing all the time. But we are eighth in the league out of 20, 32 teams. So that's a good thing. Uh, points scored. Uh, Giants beat us here. We, um, no, we beat the Giants in this. I, I apologize. This is the only two categories, rushing and um, point score. We score a whopping 17, almost 18 points a game, so that puts them 28th in the league. And um, points allowed, we give up about 24 points a game. That puts us 24th in the league. So, as I said, we only beat um, them in the rushing game and points... Um, scored, which pff, really is a matter. Okay, our defense, as I mentioned, we have uh, 42 sacks, and um, if Mack was, would have stayed healthy this year, I have no doubt the Bears would have led the league in sacks. They would have well over 50, because there, by the middle of the season, uh, Mack and Quinn were just balling it, and they were just coming and getting sacks. So if had Mack not gone down, we, I, I, I'm sure the Bears would have won the uh, sack thing, but still 42 is pretty darn good considering. And we have six interceptions. The Giants beat us that because they have 17. Um, and we have six uh, fumble uh, recoveries, and the Giants have seven. So that's equal. But, uh, but they are pretty darn good in interceptions, so Bears are going to really have to watch out for that. Now, Quinn... As you know, probably, Quinn has 17 sacks. He's one sack away from breaking Richard Dent's 1985 sack record of 17.5, 17 and a half. So I, I really hope he gets it. I am pretty sure he should. He's got two games to do it, um, and that would be pretty cool because, you know, let's put it this way. Uh, records are made to be broken. We all know that. And after Walter Payton's rushing record was broken by uh, Emmett Smith years ago, I was like, all right, I give up on records because that, 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 that broke my heart because, you know, I'm a huge Walter fan and I love him. So, but, so let's hope Quinn breaks the record at home on Sunday in the last home game. That would be pretty awesome. Good, good uh, New Year's uh, gift for us. Um, and maybe the Bears will win on, because they only seem to be able to win. They won on Thanksgiving. They won the day after Christmas. Maybe they'll win the day after New Year, which would be a real nice start to 2022. Now, as of now, right now it's Friday morning. Uh, no, it's about noon here. Um, they have not named who's going to start. 
um, Fields, Dalton, or Foles. Now, Fields and Dalton both practice this week. Honestly, I know people don't want to hear this, but I, I honestly, the next two games, I would sit Foles. I mean, excuse me, I would sit Fields. He's banged up. He's still got bad ribs. He's got a sore ankle. There's just no point. I know he wants to play, and everyone says, but he needs the experience. But you know what? Why put him out there and um, risk him getting any hurt any worse? So I just let him sit and learn. Um, I really, after that point, I don't really, who cares who starts, Dalton or Foles? They're both, well, Foles I can't stand, but um, but he did win last week. Uh, but um, I don't know, I'd like to see Dalton in there maybe. Give him one more because uh, after the season, Foles probably, uh, Dalton probably won't be back. I don't know, he might, he might not. I'm not sure who's going to be the backup to Fields, but we'll worry about that problem um, next year, right? So, I don't know. I, it's, I know a lot of people want to see Fields in there, and everybody would like to see him have a really good game. Um, you know, balling. Yeah, I would. But um, I also don't want to put him in a bad situation because, remember, our line is backed up. Half our team's on COVID, and, you know, it, I don't know about you guys, but I am over it. Um, and I'd like to give a, a, a shout out to congratulations to Devin Hester. He has made the final cut to be a finalist to be considered um, to the Hall of Fame. Uh, and I, I really pretty sure that Devin is going to do that. I mean, you know what? He really was really something special in punt returns and um, kickoffs. So I say yes. Other than that, he really wasn't very good of a receiver. Let's face it, he just wasn't. But you know what? You'd like to see another Chicago Bear go into the Hall of Fame, right? Because I want to say... The Bears, without, you know, it's been a while since I've looked it up, but I want to say the Bears are either number one or number two of having the most players in the Hall of Fame, uh, which is pretty remarkable considering, you know, they've won one Super Bowl. And um, so that's kind of a good thing, right? But the Bears have been around forever, of course. So, but I, I'm pretty sure they do. It's something, you know, if you want to look it up, but... Um, yeah, so, and, um, so Sunday, it's, it looks like it's going to be colder. I think you guys are getting some snow there on New Year's Eve. Uh, I would love to see a weather game in Chicago, one last game, but I, I, I don't know if that's going to happen. I know it's going to be cold. Um, so, but New York is used to it because they come from cold weather too. So I don't know what's going to happen to this game. I think it's going to be, um, it's either going to be one of two things. It's going to be a Bears blowout, or they're going to blow them out, or it's going to be a very close game like it was in Seattle, okay? Um, because I got to tell you what, our defense, the last few weeks, I've been impressed. And I'd like to see that rookie, um, Gibson, number 27, the new cornerback. I'd like to see him play the whole game. I've said that before. I want him to play the last two games because I'd really like to see what this kid's got. So we know going into the draft 2022, um, if you've got this kid Gibson who, um, you know, opted out of college, uh, his last year of college last year because of COVID. So the Bears drafted him in the last round, I think the sixth round. So they didn't know what they had until a couple weeks ago, and he's played darn well. So if he can really show his skills and turn out to be good, then Jalen Johnson, number 33, and this kid, number 27, Gibson, could be a nice match. So then that's, um, and we've got some backups. So then that's a problem we won't have to worry about in the draft. We do need another safety for sure because Eddie Gibson, I mean, Eddie Jackson, number four, you know what? He has good games and he has bad games, you know, so I don't know what's going to happen there. But um, so for the draft, we'd like to um, work on, you know, what we got to work on. Everybody knows that offensive line, number one priority, hands down. Um, I'd like to see him get another good linebacker to compliment um, Ogletree that I hope is coming back. And then, of course, uh, uh, Roquan Smith, number 58, who never gets the dues he deserves. Watch him today on Sunday. Look for number 58. I guarantee you're going to see him flying all over the field. He is awesome. And um, we'll see what Quinn does. That would be awesome, right? So we know what 
you've been listening to me, the regulars, the ones who do turn me in on every week, turn me on, wow, um, turn my show on, um, you know what I say, penalties, five or less, got to keep them down, time of possession, huge, because that was huge last week and we won that game, you got to keep your offense on the field, your defense off the field, and their defense on the field, and their offense on the field, uh, off the field, excuse me, so if we could do that, um, we've got a good chance to win this game, and We've got two games left, and Nagy is gone. I cannot wait. I, I don't want the season to end because this is when I start to get a little depressed, although I love the playoffs because generally you should see some really good football in the playoffs. I do love them, but then it gets closer and closer and closer to the end of the season, and I just go into a football depression. <laughs> But you know me, I'm a geek, college, and uh, and shout out to the Big Ten. Won a couple big games yesterday. Purdue beat Tennessee. Sorry, brother. And um, Michigan State won. And Wisconsin won. So three uh, Big Ten teams won yesterday. Rock on. Tonight uh, is a really big game. Michigan and Georgia. And I would love nothing more to see Michigan win. But... I, I wouldn't put a lot of money on them winning that game, so but I'm really looking forward to seeing that. So um, we're going out to dinner, so we're going to record it, and then we're going to come back and watch it. So uh, that'll be a good one. Shout out to the Big Ten, though. And um, so you know what the Bears need to do. We need to rush the ball, um, you know, which opens up. You get the running game going. That's going to open up the passing game. And I would like to see the Bears give the Bears fans at home a win. After going through this god-awful season, uh, and it doesn't matter that much in the draft at this point because we only we have second-rounders, although we want to go after. But you can get good offense linemen in the second and third round. You really can. Um, so it really doesn't matter another win um, or a loss. But I'd say at home on Sunday – what we've endured this this year, I think the Bears owe us a win at home. Okay, Nagy, do you fucking hear me? And then after the Vikings game next week, I would expect that Monday to hear Nagy's gone. I mean, if I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do. I know he's going to be fired, but it's just, and I, I, it's real curious to see. Um, I've been reading so many stories that there's a shakeup from Ted Phillips all the way down. There are stories that Pace is going to move into his job, and then they'll hire a GM and a new coach. I've heard Pace is gone. I'm 50-50 I'm, I'm on Pace. He's made some good decisions, and then he's made some stupid clusterfuck decisions. Um, so I'm not real sure how I feel about that, but you all know how I feel about Nagy. Because if you've been watching my show the last two seasons, I have been calling for his head since 19. 2019, when you all know he screwed up Mitchell. So, um, because I truly believe we had a different coach. I know a lot of people wouldn't want to hear this, but Mitchell could still be our quarterback. And I think he would have been doing, uh, would he have been Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers? No. But I think he would have been a good quarterback. And I think he could have taken us to a Super Bowl. There's been a lot worse quarterbacks in Super Bowl wins. Trent Dilford. Anybody remember that name? I mean, he wasn't very good, but he won a Super Bowl. So we'll see, right? So and so let's hope we get a win at home on Sunday in our home field. It'd be a nice way to start the new year of 2022 with all the changes that are going to happen. And the draft is coming in April in Vegas, baby. And um, that'll be pretty cool. So we'll see what happens, but let's hope we get a big win on Sunday because we certainly deserve it. And I'll be back home in Vegas watching it and with my son and his wife. Can't wait. And, um, you know, and you see in my sister's office, I'm, she's got some bear stuff uh, there and over there. There's a picture of me and my sister um, back from the... God, what, what, that was the second um, Bears convention we went to, and that was Jim Flanagan 
um, one of their offensive linemen, and that's both of us sitting with them, and then he autographed the picture for us. So that was pretty cool. And um, so, yeah, that was cool. I, we ended up going to, gosh, we went to three um, um, Bears conventions down when it was, I don't know if it's still there, down in the Chicago Hilton. A lot of fun. If you've never done it, I'd say go. It's pretty cool. Although back in the day, we went to one of the conventions. I can't remember which ones. And a lot of the Bears 85 team was there. And they were all up on stage and they had a panel. And they were just telling stories of the 85 and 86, you know, the mid-80 seasons when they were good. And there are some great stories, you know. So now it depends, you know, how if they have some of the older players, I recommend going. But, uh that was a lot of fun. So, yeah, yeah, we are right there. Um, okay, so, as always, you know what we need to do. I mean, it's been a long-ass season. I thank the same viewers that watch me every week because it has not been a whole lot of fun this year, that's for sure. Um, and if they win on Sunday, because I didn't do it last week, but I will sing you a Bears victory song, victory song, and it'll be a good one. So the Bears, you never know. So as always, you know, I thank you all for watching me. It has been a tough year. Um, you know, as the season's gone on, it got harder and harder to do this show, I won't lie, because it just got worse and worse and worse, and there was not a lot of positivity. I always tried to find the positivity in each week. You know that, but it, it, it got harder and harder and harder, and even for this girl, you know. So, But I love you guys, and I hope that um, your holidays were awesome. I hope that this new year brings you happiness, joy, healthiness, kindness, 2022 sounds like a good, doesn't it? 2022, it just sounds good. So um, let's just hope it's a good year for everybody who's looking at me right now and everybody. And and we hope that this stupid effing virus is done with because I don't know about you, I'm my last nerve with it. I really, really am. And I'm in a state now where it, it don't exist as far as they're concerned because there's no masks. Now I'm going back to Vegas where there are masks again. So I was a little spoiled, but I am vaccinated three times. So I felt pretty com uh, comfortable. Um, so again, have a, and have fun tonight. Be safe. Do not get in a car if you've been drinking. Get an Uber, walk call a friend, but please, please, I cherish you, my watchers, and my family and my friends. Don't put yourself in harm's way, okay? Have fun, but be safe. And, um, you know, again, kindness. Let's be kind. Let's stop hate. Let's one love one another. And, um, you know, just wish everybody a wonderful 2022 and I cannot thank you enough for watching me all season there's one more show to go well uh, with three because I'm going to do one Monday next Friday and then the following Monday and then we'll talk about then I'll probably sign off until the draft but there'll be three more shows before I end it but again you know how much I appreciate you all you guys rock I have my regulars who make their comments, and I cherish it. I'm missing one, though. There was one guy I'm going to give a shout-out to, the guy from Ohio. I haven't heard from him in a while, and I've always liked him. He's always said some nice things about the Bears. He's a Cleveland Bear, uh, Browns fan, and I've always wished them well. So, And um, that's it. So have a happy new year. And as always, even though I'm in Nashville, keep on rocking and rolling from Vegas, baby. Bye-bye.